first guest tonight is one of the greatest filmmakers of our time. His films include Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas, and most recently, Casino. It is my pleasure to welcome a man who, I think 20 minutes ago, found out about the Greek thing. He's shocked. Martin Scorsese. Let's have him out here. for coming, Martin. Oh, thank you. Very nice to have you here. Thank you. And I'm sorry that I had to break it to you just 20 minutes ago that oh, this was going on tonight. Well, that's okay. It was a shame about the writers. Did you see what happened? Did you see, did you see the one hanging off the, the hood? Of the I know there's one that it's actually like one got impaled on the hood did of the car. That? that was really a good touch, I thought. Was that good filmmaking? Yes, it was really excellent. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not kidding. Thank you. That's that great, because... When I, when I told the you... The thing with the horse was great. Oh, great. When I told you backstage that we were doing this tonight, you said, well, I hope there's a Trojan horse thing, and you I had no that. idea. <laughs> no, I didn't. All right. Glad to, <laughs> glad that you approved of all oh, that. I love it. I love it. All right. It. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, I, I, I've been looking forward to having you on the show for quite a while. I'm a huge fan of the movies and that you've made. And the first thing I wanted to ask you was, we live at a time right now where uh, movies are rigorously tested and uh, very difficult to, to get your own vision made. And the movies you've made pretty much... 201, actually. Movies like Taxi Driver, Raging Bull. My first question is, how do you get movies like that made? How did you get them made at the time? Didn't you get a ton of interference? Oh, yeah. On Taxi Driver, we had um, a lot of problems, but we, we uh, had a good basis. Um, what we did there, basically, was a very low budget, about a million dollars, all mm -hmm. in. And um, this is 1975. And De Niro had just won the Academy Award for Godfather II. And they had just seen my, my um, uh, film, Mean Streets, mm -hmm. and which De Niro was also in. They figured they sold the two of us together mm -hmm. into a sort of package for Taxi Driver, and we shot it 40 days, actually 40 days and nights here in New York. A million dollars yeah. to make a movie. Yeah. Because that's what this episode cost tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know well, that these shows, togas are $600,000 well, almost the a piece? I Thank you. Great. I, I, I'm, an ancient, <laughs> I'm an ancient world buff, actually. Oh, I great. Guess. Well, then you're here on a I good night. A perfect timing. All right. So so a million dollars, but, but I'm, I'm specifically, didn't you have people on the phone saying, with Raging Bull? You're saying, okay, what I want to do is make a movie about a, a boxer that, that, that few people remember. I want to shoot yeah. it in black and white. Yeah. I want it to really focus on the misery of his life yeah, and the I misery know. of the people around him. Didn't they say, wait a minute, in the end, can he win a lot of money? And uh, they did say, wait a minute, a number of times, but we had a very good producer, uh, two producers, Bob um, uh, Irwin Winkler and Bob mm -hmm. Chartoff, mm -hmm. who kind of shielded me from that. And we were in the 70s, you know, was a different thing. The 70s is sort of like a golden age of American cinema, along with the 50s and, and the 40s and 30s, because you had a lot of actual personal films, original voices making films, Robert Altman, mm -hmm. uh, Bogdanovich, mm -hmm. uh, Cimino, a whole bunch of Coppola, uh, Spielberg started, uh, all Lucas all of that sort of thing, and uh, De Palma, and at that time, it was the time of the director. Up until we were finishing Raging Bull, Raging Bull was at the same studio as Heaven's Gate, uh, which... Which Cimino is... Which Cimino made, which is a, a, actually quite an extraordinary movie, but what happened was that it went way over budget, da 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 Next thing you know, the whole studio opened, it, it closed in one night because of a, one bad review, I understand. Uh -huh. uh, the film was cut, and um, we opened nine days before that. So and we went down with it. So they you were know? kind of running interference for yeah, you in they, a way. They, in a funny way, they were sort of running interference because they had to they had to deal with that film, which is, a, as I say, some extraordinary stuff in that mm -hmm. film, and hasn't really been given its 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 due. But that ended a period of um, of uh, filmmaking in America, which is. Uh, uh, more personal, I think, and it's 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 a problem now to get the pictures made. And now, apparently, when pictures like that are made, they, they they're sort of treated like this yeah. is uh, you know this is a weird little movie, and that's almost how they're promoted. I as, know, I know. You know, this was uh, made in a foreign country, or this was exactly. this is an art film. Exactly. They, 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 it's it's almost like uh, art has become a, a bad word in a way. And it's a funny mm -hmm. thing to think about. It. It's almost 20 years ago. I mean, Taxi Driver is now the 20th anniversary. It's playing which down was reissued, playing down at the Film Forum right that's now. That's right in stereo and mm -hmm. restored because we mixed it took five days to mix it originally mm -hmm. and uh, now the remixing has been done with the stereo tracks and all that but it's much more difficult to, to get the kind of picture I, I make made these days and it has to do with you know people like De Niro and mm -hmm. uh, Sharon Stone and the film mm -hmm. helps um, that sort of thing now what about uh, a, a film like Taxi Driver you don't look at your films I, do I you once they're made at, no that's it I've had enough <laughs> really? Know, but too, so much time has gone by yeah, no, and, and, and Taxi Driver is such a classic you'd no, think you'd want to go back and look I, at it I can't take it but we actually—it's too, it's too much. I can't. It's too personal, too embarrassing. I get like uh, 
You can re I, oh, I, I know that feeling. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm looking at this show tonight? <laughs> I get home. You're gonna get home and watch this? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. What? I'm wearing a dress. Uh, <laughs> uh, but 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 it's interesting to me is that that you won't even look at it. We actually. Um, Taxi Driver is a movie that we wanted to just show a clip of your work here tonight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went, and to show a clip of Taxi Driver, the, it was prohibitively high, the cost. We couldn't do it. We had blown the really? money on this crap. And uh, we couldn't show it. So what we actually did tonight is uh, we, uh, we made a clip of our own. Okay. Of Taxi Driver. Great, we did the best we that. could. We used our own resources. And uh, so here is our clip of Taxi Driver, uh, a, a, a classic. Uh, enjoy. Take a look. Were you addressing me? Were you addressing me? Hmm? Were you addressing me? Well, there's no one else here, is there? Unless I'm sadly mistaken. There's no one else here. Ooh, you made me hurt my neck. You ruffian, you hoodlum. Were you addressing me? Tony Randall originally. I don't know. I kick myself now you, when I think of it. You it's ruffian, terrible. you hooligan. I know, I know. <laughs> I love Tony. Listen, uh, can you hang on one second because we want to take a break. Do your very best. Uh, we're going to have more with Martin Scorsese when we come back. Stick around. talking before the show and uh, and I of course mentioned when I when I brought you out here uh, all your your great movies I didn't mention a film of yours that, that doesn't get mentioned as much that I really love which is King of Comedy oh, I love that movie Thank you. and Thank you. Thank you. and uh, I was curious about it First, I always had this kind of uh, you know that Rupert Pupkin is just this very original character uh -huh. this guy who just sort of forced his way onto TV with little or no experience yeah. I identify with him uh, <laughs> Rupert Pupkin in some ways, I think. <laughs> I'm doing about as well as him, I think, yeah. But, uh, but, but my, my, the thing that fascinated me about the movie, first of all, was Jerry Lewis's performance yeah, in the movie. Because he was really great as that person. I was wondering, did he bring a lot? Did he know who that character was? Oh, yeah, he understood it. He understood it completely. He felt, as Jerry Langford, he felt that. He Jerry felt Langford, that. who was he pretty much, he wasn't playing Johnny Carson, but a person of Johnny Carson's stature. Of that stature, and a person that, Jerry, Jerry Lewis is a guy who, uh, he's, he's done directing films in an extraordinary way. He's done... Uh, uh, singing, he's mm -hmm. done. Uh, he's done late night talk shows. He's mm -hmm. done. Uh, he's a philanthropist. So he's part. He's show business. Uh, he's he's he encompasses so many aspects of it, and um, he gets he gets in the, the, like the scenes where he's walking in the street and people mm -hmm. yelling, "Hey, Jerry!" Yeah. I said, "No, we're going to line up some people." He said, "You won't need to." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Watch." We shot him walking in the street with a hidden camera, and people are really yelling. That was real. That's real. Yeah. Uh huh. People <laughs> the, yelling. The construction workers. We we panned up, got back down, you know, with the camera. <laughs> he was right. He said he couldn't walk a block, half a block. People, oh. Jerry, we love you, Jerry. All that sort of thing. It's it's an incredible movie, and and uh, you know, I was we were thinking today about so many of your films. There are scenes from your movies that have kind of entered pop culture. Uh, you know, it, the consciousness. Uh, you know, people talk about the, the scene we just did with uh, Tony Randall. Oh, you know, to me, are you yeah. talking to me? Uh, scenes like, right, I know. But, but they really have become, they've entered this, they've become in a way immortal. And uh, the scenes from uh, Goodfellas, where oh, yeah. Joe Pesci says, am I a clown to you? Yeah, people, yeah. are you aware when you're making the movie that this is the scene that's going to live on? Or are you sometimes surprised that there's a scene you think well, you is going to... both scenes, interesting, they both came from the actors. Um, uh, that was the last few days, of, last two or three days of shooting Taxi Driver, and it was a sequence in the script where he's preparing himself in front of the mirror and he's doing things with guns and whatever. whatever. And I said, we've got to say something. You have to talk to yourself in the mirror. And I said, we've got to be careful because Brando did a wonderful job talking to himself in the mirror in a picture called Reflections in the Golden Eyes. It can't be like that. It can't be mm -hmm. like this. You have to be very careful. So I just got, I was on 89th Street in Columbus Avenue where we were shooting, mm -hmm. and I got uh, um, there was no video assist at the time, so I just sat at his, at his, uh, right, right below Bob. He was standing in front of the camera, mm -hmm. we were shooting into it, and uh, he just started saying that. Are you talking to me? And I said, you know, keep doing it over and over. And he just got into a rhythm, 
and got into a rhythm of it, and it was extraordinary. And I knew something special was happening, especially because we so were you, you had an idea. I had a, it was coming from him. It was mm -hmm. the, the paranoia was coming from him, and he was just he was it was just so miraculous what he did. And the poor AD was knocking on the door trying to come on. We're late because the picture had no schedule. We had to mm -hmm. leave. We really we had no schedule. <laughs> the poor guy, and he was responsible. Oh. I said, "Oh, uh -huh. give us two more minutes, please." Uh -huh. And we were shooting. We shot it like an hour and a half. That one bit. That one bit. And then, and then are you talking? And then are you think I'm funny? Mm -hmm. That definitely I knew when Joe Pesci told me because that actually happened to Joe Pesci in real life. Right. Yeah. And it's and such a scary moment. Yeah. So, so he actually experienced he that. Experienced he experienced it. Yeah. And when he described the story to me, I said, "I got to put it in." We just the film was loosely structured enough, mm -hmm. so we did it. And that day. We were shooting at the Hawaii Kai. That's on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It was a Polynesian restaurant right, not right near where they had that thing, Cats. <laughs> the cats You're talking thing. about the finest theatrical production. Yeah, I didn't say anything bad. In I the history. Of, don't call it that thing, Cats. I, I just said, it's that right by it, you know. And uh, I just happened, I slipped. I don't know, I don't know what happened to me. Uh, <laughs> but Joe, that we were shooting. That thing, Cats. Well, whatever it is. Yeah, I'm allergic <laughs> to cats. I'm allergic, to, I'm definitely allergic to cats. What can I They're tell you? Cats. They go like this. It's terrific. They come out and they touch you. Don't go. Don't go. <laughs> they come into the audience and they touch you. Do you ever see that? <laughs> oh, man. That. They come out. You just said you, you said nothing bad about it. And then we get you to say, no, they come not. out into the audience and touch you. Don't go. <laughs> don't go. I love that. I love that we're able. It just gets me very nervous. I don't know. I'm sure it's a wonderful show and just deathly allergic to cats. That's all. Okay, Big cats fine, coming out. Fine. I can't take it. But uh, <laughs> Joe, I don't know. We were talking about it. You, you think I'm funny. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Joe was doing that. And actually, people from the studio came down that day, and it was like a party. The uh -huh. laughing, the laughter on the track is really from us behind the camera. I mean, it was extraordinary. Two cameras, mm -hmm. two cameras, and we did about four, about two hours of improvisation on that. But I knew it when he was doing it. I knew that that it would be something special because it really happened to him and had that, that, that element of truth to it. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, I, I know we're. I'm getting the signal that we're we're running late on time. I, I did want to mention though. I was surprised that you grew up in Little Italy, which I knew, but I didn't know that you you didn't get outside Little Italy. For quite a long time, long you time, never left yeah. Little Italy. No, Little never Italy. really. The first time I went to the West Side, I, I grew up on Elizabeth Street, on mm -hmm. Houston Street, right off the Bowery. And the first time I went to the West Side, I walked. Uh, uh, it was when I went to my orientation day at NYU, New York University. That's the first time you got out yeah. of Little Italy. Well, not out of Little Italy, but out to the West Side to Greenwich Village. Okay. We never went there. Okay. We didn't need to. We had everything we wanted. We had the pork store. Uh huh. We had. <laughs> We had, uh, you know, the cheese store, we had the grocery store. Sure, the you didn't need markets, anything. It's a uh -huh. funeral parlor on the same block. Who uh -huh. cares? You, you know. <laughs> what more do you need? You must know. It's good. You must know. Uh, what, quickly, yeah. very quickly, uh, b before we have to run, you must know the you must know the best restaurant in Little Italy. Tell oh, us all no, what no, it is. No, never, never went to restaurants because how, how are you going to go to a restaurant? Your mother cooks the best. That was the end. <laughs> if you went to a restaurant, you got killed. Yeah, and your mom, who's famous for it. She's all right. For the cooking. That was the you end of it. A spoon why why to the eat a restaurant? Forget it. All right. Well, uh, listen. I, first, I want to congratulate you on being honored by the American oh. Museum of the uh, Moving Image. And of course, Casino, which is a great movie, is out at theaters now. Thanks. It is. It's a real pleasure to have you Thanks. here on the show, Martin Scorsese. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Great. Really nice. Life's worth living. Richard Belzer, Lisa Loeb, and Nine Stories are coming up. We'll be right back. Stick around.